Stop using salt and electrolytes until you hear this. It's Dr. Living Good, and we're about to get into what you absolutely need to know before you use salt or electrolytes. There's so much confusion around salt. Good, bad, ugly, what's the deal? I'm gonna show you the research and a couple crucial mistakes if you are using salt or electrolytes, especially to straighten this out for you so you know exactly what to look like, but also for you to check your bags, your sachets, your little on the go. If you're taking an electrolyte, you really need to understand this one. Table salt, sea salt, something in the cupboard, cooking with it, electrolytes, your lemon lime, your berries, or you're drinking some kind of powder on the go. Make sure you hear this first. You can understand very crucial differences. Could be toxifying your body with the wrong choice. I'm about to set a very long, confusing, age old topic diving into salt. Low salt, high salt, what type of salt, Celtic, Himalayan, sea salt, regular salt, table salt. What's the scoop? Do we need to avoid it? Is it killing us? Is it helping us? How do we know to make sense of all of this? There's a, so many benefits to salt inside of your body. Na on the periodic table is involved in fluid balance. Keeping the balance of fluids, sometimes we're retaining too much of the wrong types of salt, which I'm gonna show you in a little bit. We are retaining water, might give you some edema, might give you some fluid buildup. Is involved though in preventing dehydration. Like that's what it's supposed to do. Hold on to that water so we don't dehydrate ourselves. Dehydration is a major problem in today's world. Also impacting blood pressure levels, right? Can help to actually lower it by pulling more fluid into the tissue, a little bit less into the bloodstream. That's one function. Muscle function, to fire these muscles. That's why when you do a lot of work and you sweat, it tastes salty. It's one of the main electrolytes involved in it. Essential for muscle contraction and muscle relaxation, okay? Nerve health, the conduction of electricity in your body, the most important system inside your body, your nerves require salt in order to conduct the nerve impulses and send the signals you know, around the brain and down into the body. Nutrient absorption relies on salt inside of your body, helps carry nutrients into the cells. So that osmosis, that's how nutrients get into the cell and it's salt that helps to drive those imbalances to push fluids one way or the other. Electrolyte balance, salt balances out the electrolytes and the fluids in the body. Acid balance inside of the system, too much acidity, too much bad food, too much medication. Salt's gotta balance and regulate acid base balances inside the system, pH balance. Digestion, salt aids in digestion. So there's a lot of benefits to it, but you can do it wrong, you can mess it up, and you can toxify yourself in the process. So which salt you choose matters, and it matters greatly. Now, before we get into exactly what type of salt to choose, and I'm gonna have you do a package check to see what type of salt is in, let's go to one of the prominent studies that I love to show you excess salt intake to low of salt intake. Which one's better? Well, they compared, they just large study, tens of thousands of people, and they looked looked at compared with usual sodium intake, low and excessive sodium diets on both ends of the spectrum had negatives. Big meta-analysis that was done and on the population that was done with, when people got too little salt, mortality rates went up. When people got too much salt, mortality rates went up. But if you got right in the middle, like this is Goldilocks stuff, which is just right. Too little, you're in trouble. You need it for all the reasons I just mentioned. Too much and you're overloading your body, you're increasing your blood pressure at that point, instead of regulating it properly, you're getting fluid buildup, you're damaging your heart, you're holding on to a lot of that fluid. So we don't wanna overdo those two things. We wanna be right in the middle. So you need salt. It is your friend, proven by this large study. That's just one example of many. They studied 23 different cohort studies to get to this conclusion. So 23 different ones, tens of thousands of people. Sodium intake mortality, both low sodium intakes and high sodium intakes are associated with increased mortality consistent with a U-shaped association between sodium intake and health outcomes. So too little, mortality rate, not good. If your mortality rate is high, you get right in the middle, it goes down, you get too much, it goes up again. That U-shape. So which type you eat matters, and so let's start breaking that down. We want to avoid processed salts. Think the inside of the grocery store, right? That's where a lot of this is. And this is in the form of straight up sodium chloride. Now that is the formula of all types of salt, but when it's stripped down to just a table salt or even just a sea salt form, it is just sodium and chloride. Now in nature, that salt has a whole bunch of other micro ingredients involved with it. 15% of salt makeup is all these other micro ingredients which are crucial for balancing, powering your body in little micro enzymes 
enzymes needed in order to do the processes of your system. Now, sodium chloride, commonly found in conventional products inside of the grocery store, highly processed and refined, lacking all of those nutrients. There's about 80 micronutrients stripped out of it. It's just sodium and just chloride. 98% sodium chloride, 2% additives and chemicals is what it usually is. And this is in the form of like anti-caking agents that are linked to health concerns. It tastes really salty, but it causes lots of water retention, which causes more health problems long-term. It raises the blood pressure and the major knock on sodium chloride, because sea salt and sodium chloride, after I kept digging into this, are pretty much made in a very similar way. Sodium chloride table salts, right, really refined down. But even sea salt, you're just taking salt water, you are evaporating the water and you're ending up with the salt. The problem with that, it's better than a table salt, okay? So worst is straight up table salt or packaged sodium in foods. Next though, being sea salt, it's a better choice, but you're still getting whatever is in the water is ending up in your salt. So when there's microplastics and forever chemicals in our oceans, in our water supplies now, those aren't being filtered out and they end up in much higher concentration showing the research in the actual sea salt itself. So what a discrepancy. So how do we avoid this? Well, that's happening because of our industrial revolution and technology advancements over the past 80, 100 years that are now polluting the waters that's ending up in your salt. So if you're using the water source to get your salt, you're taking on whatever pollutants are involved with that. So where do we go? Well, we go to what has been made over the last several thousand years, not impacted by the pollution, and that's you mine it. And so whether it is Celtic or Himalayan or in the mines of Utah, it's mined at that point. It's not impacted to any level close to the amount of pollution because it's just been tucked in the earth, preserved from everything that we've created and the pollutants we put into the world over the last hundred years. Now, the other problem with sodium chloride and sea salt are oftentimes bleached. So at least if you're gonna have any form of sea salt, you gotta get it unbleached, okay? Cause they want it to be white colored and they're often putting in anti-caking agents. You really gotta watch the side of your salt container, Morton's, whatever one it is, has an anti-caking agent oftentimes in it. We don't need that. So we wanna go towards more of a pink Himalayan sea salt, a Celtic, avoid the pollution, get it from mining areas and we're not going to get those microplastics or forever chemicals. Now, it is common in the natural food industry to use that type, but I'm going to show you in a moment that it's not as common as you think. And a lot of people still are kind of cutting corners by just using regular sea salt or table salt, okay? Now, when you get mined salt, it is 85% sodium chloride. So the sodium chloride is still there, but at a much lesser dose, almost 15% less. 15% of the makeup of that salt is the essential minerals and trace minerals, like boron or just little ones. You just need little bits of it to power reactions and processes inside of your body. So when you mine the salt, you preserve the 80 84 different elements found in a real form of salt. Now, it has a salty taste, but doesn't taste as salty, if that kind of makes sense. Like you're getting salt, but it's not like this extreme version when you have table salt, right? Big difference between them if you ever taste tested one next to the other. Detoxing impacts. I use this when I do like a gut reset protocol. I'll use proper mined salt, Himalayan or Celtic or a real salt, right? It helps regulate blood pressure and it relieves muscle tension when you put the right amount inside the body. Now you could do too much of any good thing, right? I'm not telling you overload this significantly, but we can handle this type of salt. It maintains electrolyte balance and it is healthy to consume. So I would say we have an unhealthy salt problem, table salt, even regular sea salt. I would elevate your salt game to a Himalayan, a Celtic, or a US mined salt, like a real salt, okay? One of those three. Now we gotta watch out for this on packaged goods or supplements. I went and pulled a couple of them for you because I want to call out what you need to look for when you're looking at your packaged goods, okay? So let me pull this up for you here. There is our research study. If we go right to here, here's one of the most common brands of electrolytes, right? We're getting salts inside of the body. Now, when you read this, flip this over, I always teach you, don't go to the Nutrition Facts panel. Don't worry too much about these kind of, it's vegan. Well, all salt is vegan. It's dairy-free. Thank God, okay. It's gluten-free. Okay, the, yes, it's salt, all right? It's 
it's non-GMO. Okay, fine. So we're not worried so much about these things, especially when it comes to salt or an electrolyte. But look at the ingredients we have here. You are buying this to put those micro ingredients in your body. The big dogs in the electrolyte world are balancing the fluid inside your body, powering your muscles, controlling your blood pressure, potassium, magnesium, chloride, sodium. So NACL is gonna be a big component of this. But look when you get in, cane sugar and dextrose are the first two ingredients. Now, sure, to balance some fluids, I understand it plays a role, but we're really just trying to get electrolytes in, right? We're really just trying to get magnesium, chloride, potassium, sodium, that's what we're trying to get in. So that's the first two ingredients, which is wild. Citric acid, but then it's just salt. It is not defined and this is what concerns me when your ingredient of salt is just salt you can assume this is table salt this is stripped down anti-caking agents 98 percent sodium chloride none of the micro ingredients right so we're lacking and then this starts to come with potential microplastics potential forever chemicals now i'm not that's why i won't show any brands because i'm not i haven't tested their product specifically but i'm very concerned at that point as a consumer when i just see salt just salt Look at this. So this is the most prominent brands of electrolytes. Now here's another one, okay? To look at, here's the first ingredient, salt. At least we don't have sugar as the first ingredient here. I'm thankful for that. But we got salt in the form of just sodium chloride. So these are the top ones. This is the beneficial ones. These are the popular ones. Now we got some magnesium, malite, potassium chloride. I'm fine with these natural flavors. I don't know where they source theirs from. So hopefully they're okay and stevia. So it's just the source of salt that I'm showing you. Even if you're taking an electrolyte, you got to look, is it sodium chloride? And this is what I'm seeing over and over and over again of the most popular popular ones. And I wanted to take the time to make this video to understand why, why does that matter? Because you're missing the micronutrients and you're adding the pollutants when it is just sodium chloride. So what do we want to be looking for? Well, I created a little comparison chart. All right. I went and made my own electrolytes. Okay. You can get them or not get them. That's not the point of this, but I just wanted to show you the differences here, right? We want it to be non-GMO, nothing that's genetically modified. That shouldn't be an issue when we're just talking about electrolytes, but let's just make sure that's happening. A couple of them do. Actually, Actually, one of them doesn't say non-GMO. So I don't know what they're sourcing some of that stuff from and they didn't uphold that standard. So these are some of the top brands. So I just compared it to the top two. We don't want any added sugars. Now, the first one I showed you had two forms of sugar in it. It could be sweetened with a stevia or monk fruit. I like these in proper organic forms. Nothing wrong with them. You're getting small amounts. Monk fruit, stevia, those kind of natural sweeteners. I have an entire video of breaking down 25 different natural sweeteners. You can check that one out to get more information on which ones are proper, okay? Naturally sourced sea salt. So you're mining mean the sea salt. Neither of the top two brands do that. Many of them don't. It should say right on the package, Himalayan sea salt. That's what mine does. Himalayan sea salt. We want to have magnesium, potassium, sodium, chloride, great. All of those in there in proper forms, easily adjustable portions, and then price per serving even still gets it. Even with, that's what doesn't make sense to me, per serving, we could be using a better form of our salts and we're not. So in summary, the type of salt you use matters. So in the shelf, we have a grindable pink Himalayan sea salt or a Celtic sea salt, or we have like a real salt that's mined in the United States. We want mined versions. If you have a sea salt, Salt, just a regular sea salt in your cupboard. I'm not beating you up on that. Just realize there is still some pollution. There's another level and that's why it's worth going up to a mined form of salt, a more rock salt, kosher, same thing. You're going to be pulling more from the sea. You're getting the pollution in that regard. So we want to be careful of how it's processed and where the original source was. So when it says Himalayan or says Celtic or says real salt, we know it comes from there. And on the side of the bottle, it should say containing 50 plus micro ingredients. Those micro elements are part of it. That's what we're looking for. When it comes to electrolytes, we got to be very careful. Sodium chloride by itself on the nutrition facts panel, that's what it's listed as. Okay. I'm talking about the ingredients section. Does it say, is it emphasizing that we have a Himalayan or a Celtic or a real mine salt form to avoid the pollution that is unfortunately happening in the sea? And if we're not taking extra, extra measures towards that, that's ending up in you and me. Nice rhyme. With that said, Check out more videos on breaking down the forms of sugar. Just looking at ingredients in the body, you can do a lot of shopping with me as well as I go around the grocery store, but really understanding real salt and making sure you get the proper form in. Not too little, don't overdo it. Right in the middle is what we're looking for to have a nice balance of a little bit of salt in your diet each day. Just get the right type. There it is, peeps. Go make it a great day. You might as well. You're never going to get it back.